Hello everyone, it's Phil Jones and I am at the Sony headquarters in Rancho Bernardo, California and I am talking to my friend JT Austin. So JT, how are you? Good, yourself? So today we're going to be talking about a new Sony projector, the Sony Bravia 7. And for those who want the, the other product number, it's the VPL XW 5100 ES. So I actually had the opportunity to review this projector and I was quite impressed with it. So why don't you um, give us a little de a few details about this particular model? Definitely. So this is a new addition to the lineup, as you said. We announced at the same time we announced our basically entire home entertainment lineup for 2025. So it joined our new TV announcement, it joined our new home audio announcements. And really this is designed as an upgrade for the existing XW5000 ES. Mm -hmm. So the 5000 is gonna continue, great piece, native 4K resolution, laser, 2000 lumens. But we have some pretty strong points to upgrade into this one. Mm -hmm. So. First and foremost, we see on paper, this is a bump of about 10% in brightness. So we've gone from 2000 lumens up to 2200. Mm -hmm. Now on paper, you're going 10%, what's this all about? But the real uh, difference is combining that brightness boost with our new processing. Last year at Cedia, um, you got to see it yourself, the new Bravi Projector 8 and Bravi Projector 9, where we introduced our XR processor for projector. So taking our flagship level TV processing and adapting it to the specific challenges of our projection. So by combining that new um, brightness boost with that processor, we really have an entirely different animal on our hand. The XW5000ES is a, a really popular piece because it delivers outstanding um, picture quality. It's literally one of the least expensive three chip native 4K projectors that are available on the market. And Sony has always stressed the importance of video process. But there's some new functionality that's built into the new processor that go beyond the processor that was in the, 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 the 5000. So can you talk a little bit about some of the stuff? Absolutely. So we call the feature set together Pro Cinematic HDR, and it's a combination of not only tone mapping, uh, we call it XR Dynamic Tone Mapping, mm -hmm. because one of the big challenges for home projection is they're not getting the theatrical master from the studios. Mm -hmm. So when you go and see a standard theater or if you're going to a premium format like an IMAX or a Dolby, those are custom grades for those projectors in those environments. You're talking generally under 80 nits for an IMAX, mm -hmm. just under 110 for a Dolby. Mm -hmm. And when you get home release, suddenly you have a 1000 nit master, a 4000 nit master, mm -hmm or in some rare cases like Mad Max Fury Road, sometimes up to 10,000 at Masters. Mm -hmm. Now a TV with its expanded brightness range has an easier time handling that brightness. But a projector, which is used to getting that lower brightness level content from the studios, you really have to do a lot of tone mapping to not only make it look proper in terms of HDR, uh, but also maintain that creative intent. So that's really what this new feature set is doing. So not only in terms of black level, combining our tone mapping with a feature called XR Deep Black for laser light control, mm -hmm. uh, but also making sure we're maintaining those brightness. Uh, because some theatrical releases recently have been lower uh, brightness levels, um, mm -hmm. things like Dune, uh, or if you're a, kind of a gothic horror fan, the new Nosferatu movie was incredibly dim. Mm -hmm. But home release streaming content is really starting to push that brightness. So by having an amazing brain in that processor to take that higher brightness level mm -hmm. and bring it down to a better HDR experience in a home theater, uh, we're getting much closer to not only a TV presentation, but much closer to kind of what people are used to seeing in those premium format theaters now in your living room. Tone mapping is a fine art, and two projectors of the same luminance will choose different options for how they tone map. There is no right or wrong about tone mapping. It's the one that gets you closer to feeling like you're seeing it at a cinema or how, it, how that particular um, broadcast content would look like on a high luminance flat panel television set. So I, I hear people all the time saying, well, this one shows all the highlights or this one does, you know, the, according to a test pattern, um, makes the test pattern pass the test pattern, but that's not really what we're trying to do. We're trying to utilize the limited amount of brightness range of a projector that has 2200 lumens to give you the, as close of that, um, as close to the creator's intent as possible. So tone mapping is, is a fine art. And I will tell you that, um, I've always thought that Sony does a really, really good job at, at tone mapping and it continues to evolve. And the nice thing about it is it does a good job maintaining the highlight details and stuff like that. But the, the mid-tones where most of the, the skin tones and colors, it just has a vibrancy that a lot of times is lost when you try to capture 
deep blacks and highlight detail. Normally you end up with this flat looking picture and that's not what you get with this unit. Definitely. We have a couple of aces up our sleeve when it comes to this projector for that. The first of course being the XR processor and one of the main things we've taken from the TV implementation of it mm -hmm. is that cross analysis. We're breaking down the image into hundreds of thousands of individual objects mm -hmm. and individually remastering the clarity, color, contrast. So we're able to recognize that's a face we need to be careful of, not only the detail, but also as you mentioned, the skin tones as well. But the other side is our professional side, not only making movies and cameras like the Venice that are being used for major motion pictures, uh, but also those amazing BVM reference monitors. And now what's really exciting about Bravia is they're becoming the go-to client reference monitor. Mm -hmm. So if you go into most studios, their client's reference monitor is now gonna be either a Sony mini LED for bright room grading mm -hmm. or a QD OLED for dark room grading. So we know what the creators are expecting when they're mastering their HDR mm -hmm. and could really bring that back into what we have in your media room, in your theater room with the Bravia projector set. Yeah, and, and that's nice because if you think about it, a lot of companies that make projectors don't make flat panels. So being able to, for both teams to kind of work together to say, hey, how do I get this to look as, what is the, the, the creator, the, the mastering artist looking for on a flat panel and how do I get as much of that into a projector as possible is something that is beneficial to me being able to make both of them. And the other thing too is the 4K SXRD is one of the reasons that this thing is just amazing looking. A three chip projector just does a better job reproducing all three colors um, it's native 4K, so there's no pixel shifting going on, and it just looks more cinematic. It looks sharp without being over sharp. It's just um, so I think the SXRD panel has a has a is, is a is a big deal. Yeah, and it's why we've been evolving it for generations. Like you think the first iteration of SXRD was in our first couple lines of projectors, but also of course rear projection, and it's just been this constant evolution to where we're at now with this amazing contrast, not just black level, but also maintaining those shadow details and those near black areas mm -hmm. is really what this excels in. Yeah, and, and this projector has the ability to, to dim its light source. So when you combine the really precise you know, laser dimming with the, the, the SXRD panel, you can get infinite contrast. But even if you do it natively, sequential on and off, there's very few projectors out there that can match this projector when it comes to, to native contrast. And that would be maybe another LCOS projector. So, so the blacks just give you a good foundation. But a lot of times people chase the absolute black and they're so obsessed with that native contrast number. But when the light hits the screen, hits your walls and bounces back on the screen, the fact that one can go to 0 0.005 nits and the other one can go only goes to 0 0.01 nit, you're not gonna see that. So, so a lot of times then it just becomes, in a real world, on a test pattern, one may measure a higher native. But in a real world, am I actually seeing that when I actually display the content? So now it's just how do I take the inky blacks and the maximum brightness that I have and utilize the processing to get the most out of the picture. So, so really, really cool. Now there's some other things about it. So like the um, 5000, this uses a manual lens. It's a high quality lens. And if you're somebody with a 16 by nine screen, you're gonna set it once and forget it, right? But there are some people that maybe have a 235 screen and they wanna switch from aspect ratios from 235 to 16 by nine. You have, and this is a, a manual lens, but you have a solution for that, so I don't have to keep climbing up there and making adjustments, right? Absolutely, so there's a recent addition to the uh, Projector 7, it's digital aspect ratio correction or scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you do have that 235 to one screen, mm -hmm. you can actually set the projector up so your black bars are above and below the screen, you've got that nice full field kind of cinemascope image, mm -hmm. and then when you do switch over to 16 by nine content, you're watching something full screen, 16 by nine streaming, you're watching broadcast sports, you name mm -hmm. it, all you need to do is press the aspect ratio on the remote and it'll scale itself in so your 16 by nine is now filling up the uh, height of the screen. So when you do that, of course, you're not utilizing the full resolution like because you, you set it for two, 235 so there are some stuff off the screen. But that applies whether it's motorized or not, right? So, um, and there's enough resolution there. 4K is enough resolution for that. Most content these days do, does, do not have enough fine detail to utilize the full 4K resolution anyway unless you're looking at maybe, you know, planet Earth, the, back, the, the trees in the background of planet Earth. So 
but that convenience of that is really nice. And you don't have to wait for the lens to move. It's just pretty much instantaneous. Exactly. So not only combining that uh, plenty of resolution with the native 4K, but also with our new XR clear image. This is a new upscaling engine we've adapted from the TV side. Mm -hmm. So it does a really great job at upscaling any type of content. So we're really taking full advantage of the resolution this projector is capable mm -hmm. of. Uh, but also, especially if you're going to be scaling in and out, uh, is the noise reduction. Mm -hmm. Now, this for the purists out there, this is not a smoothing filter that's going to take all the grain out of your classic films. Mm -hmm. This is really intelligent about removing noise while maintaining that detail. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too that you did that, that's new is um, we always say you don't want to use any kind of digital keystone correction. Um, because so a lot of times when you do that, it really kind of messes with your resolution. Now, so of course, you always want to make sure you put the projector in the proper position and align it, but sometimes there will be applications where you just can't get it exactly right. And you have a, a new kind of digital keystone correction as well, right? Yeah, so new uh, keystone correction list, vertical and horizontal. And as you said, we've been really hesitant to put this into our projectors for years because it does affect normally the resolution, the sharpness of the projector, especially if you start doing big keystone adjustments in the corners. Mm -hmm. So with this new keystone adjustment, uh, just like I mentioned before with the XR clear image, mm -hmm. we're taking advantage of that upscaling, that sharpening engine, combining it with keystone, so there is less, if not any, visible penalty to using Keystone. So if you do have that really challenging installation, mm -hmm. you can't get it perfectly square to the screen, this does have a workaround to help you out. Now, I actually gave it an award. I thought it looked, to me, uh, on a screen up to about a 120, 130-inch screen, um, when you combine the amount of brightness it can generate accurately, because a lot of times they'll have projectors that say it can reproduce more, more light output, but by the time you calibrate it or make it look color accurate, that 4,000 lumen projector is now a 2000 lumen projector. So, but you, on with the amount of brightness that it has and the tone mapping, I thought it looked really, really good uh, on screens up to about 130, cause that's, that's, a, that's good. And, and I think at this price point you're looking at, um, that would probably be a, a very common screen size, right? Absolutely. And we have taken this in certain shows and certain demo rooms, we have taken it up to 150 on a higher gain screen. But yeah, the most common usage for the 5000 series and the new Bradley Projector 7 is gonna be the kind of 120, 120, 130, 130 1.1 gain cinema type screens. Yeah. Yeah, and if, of course, if you want more brightness and you want more capability like motorized lenses, you have other solutions for that as well. Definitely, yeah. So the, uh, the brand new Bravi projector lineup, stepping up to the projector eight and the projector nine, mm -hmm. uh, not only gonna get you bigger boosts in brightness, going from 2200 lumens on the seven to uh, 2700 lumens on the eight, all the way up to above 3000 lumens on the nine. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then we are introducing motorized lenses, multiple picture positions, mm -hmm. uh, but also even more advanced optics on those lenses as well for even more resolution of that projector. The black level is really challenging to do. So, and, and because of an SXRD, it does really, really good with black level, but those bumps in brightness is, is difficult, which is why when you look at the, as the, as the brightness goes up, there you do have to, it does command a premium in order to do that. But you're, but that extra brightness is not at the sacrifice of black level. So that means you get more brightness, which means brighter highlight detail, just more visible contrast. Um, and that and that difference is noticeable. And it allows you to go into much larger um, screens and, and still deliver kind of a vibrant um, HDR picture. Yeah, it really comes down to the approach of each of the projector's development teams. We're always after creative intent. So yes, we do have brightness boosts, but those brightness boosts are never at the expense of resolution, they're never at the expense of contrast, they're never at the expense of color. So we're always gonna make sure that regardless if you're looking at a 5000, the projector seven, projector eight, projector nine, you get that Sony processing, that Sony image quality that we're known for. Okay, excellent. Now, one more, gaming. Um, anything for the gamer out there? Because there are some people, you guys do make PlayStations. So. Exactly, they are just upstairs right now. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, with the new Bravi projector lineup, it first appeared in the projector eight and projector nine. We've also brought it into the new projector seven. Mm -hmm. uh, both inputs are HDMI 2.1 spec mm -hmm. uh, with 4K 120, with auto low latency mode as well. Mm -hmm. And interestingly on the TV side, we're always a little reluctant to talk about input lag because it comes down to more factors than that. Mm -hmm. But with projectors, we're very proud of this because mm -hmm. previously, if you're paying attention to gaming projectors for the last few years, mm -hmm. An impressive input lag used to be 30 to 50 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Well, with 4K 120 on the Bravia projector, you're now looking at 12 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And I've even seen some reviewers test a little bit faster than that. Mm -hmm. So absolutely outstanding gaming performance, but without sacrificing true 4K resolution and all the other processing benefits we talked about. That input lag or response time is very good for all but the most hardcore 
casual gamers. If you need more than that, <laughs> you should be, normally you're sitting in front of a gaming monitor with a, with a gigantic rig. So, so as I said, JT, I've been really impressed with the, the projector. And when I first saw it, I was like, okay, just the processing. But seeing the difference it made in the picture, it is a noticeable improvement in picture quality over the 5000. The VPL XW5000 ES retails for? That full SMPP is around uh, 5999 Okay, and then this unit, which is the Bravia Projector 7, is retailing uh, this for? This one is 9999 The Bravia Projector 8 at? You're giving me a good test on numbers today. The Projector 8 should be around uh, 18000 Okay, and then the big boy, big, the, the Bravia Projector 9. Yeah, big boy Projector 9 sits around uh, 35000 MSRP. Okay, so all of these projectors, I would call them premium models. And you really don't understand it until you see them because it's so hilarious. I do a lot of reviews and I'll grab some pretty nice little lifestyle projectors, little DLPs, lifestyle projectors, and they will look amazing. And then something like this will show up and then I'll put it on a table and I'll be like, oh, <laughs> you know, the other one has, you know, tri laser and it's got 3,700 or ANSI lumens and it does you know, 107% REC 2020, and then you switch to this and you realize that those, those numbers are pretty much meaningless is if you don't know how to utilize the tools, you know? So this is just using really, really good ingredients and the process is a really good recipe. Exactly, and I've always said, like, you don't want to sit down on a couch and just start a spec sheet. No one's impressed by those numbers. It really comes down to what's on those screens. So really encourage anyone who hasn't seen one of these, mm -hmm. find a local dealer with a showroom and really sit down and watch because the work the engineers have done with this XR processor mm -hmm. combined with all those other features we talked about, there's just a little bit of magic in these. Exactly, and I would tell you one of the quickest ways is when you do these demonstrations, look at things like skin tones. The, it just looks more like a, like a true human being. Skin tones look right. And a lot of times projectors struggle with that. Definitely, yeah, skin tones. And then also just the overall HDR impact these mm -hmm. have. Uh, we're so used to seeing HDR a certain way, be it a premium format theater, or maybe we've had an older 4K HDR projector in the past. Mm -hmm. But what this processor is doing with that new tone mapping, um, it's just an incredibly more cinematic image, much closer to real life. And it sounds odd when we're talking about projectors, but it looks closer to what a flagship flat panel TV can deliver mm -hmm. than what we're used to normally seeing. On yeah, it does look, these, these new Sony projectors do look more like, they do have more of that, because of, maybe because of the way that the, it tone maps to like the mid-tones, um, at HDR tone maps to the mid-tones, it, it has more of a, it feels more like that flat panel representation. And I will, I will honestly say that if I compare these units to like maybe a, an older flagship Sony projector from four or five years ago, um, this performance is actually the same, actually better when it comes to just its processing and stuff. That may be a little brighter, but actually even the brighter flagships didn't look as, don't look as good as this guy does. Oh yeah, um, actually it's funny you mentioned that. I took home an old uh, 1025ES the other week for a couple testing just to, to test out some older firmware. Mm -hmm put this back on the wall and just the di difference was night and day. And I went, wait, this was how much five years ago <laughs> compared to what this is doing now? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so, so JT, um, excellent projector. If I want to learn more about the, the full um, Sony Bravia projector lineup, where would I go? So uh, two options to do that. Uh, right on our uh, standard site, electronics.sony.com, we'll have all of these. Uh, if you're more focused on integration, custom install, high-end home theater, there's also sonypremiumhome.com, which is a little more uh, geared towards that crowd. But both have full information, full spec sheets, and uh, even links to videos our team has produced as well. Exactly. And be sure to check out our reviews of the uh, Sony Bravia Projector 7 and the Bravia Projector 8 and the Bravia Projector 9 on projectorreviews.com. So take care, everyone, and we will talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.